Good morning. In our quest to find out the best mediums, at least in in my opinion for what I'm doing in my artwork, and hopefully it will help you in yours in regards to pressed flowers and what to protect them with, um, and again, this is wet media. I will link the dry media laminating techniques in a, the comment section below, and also the prior video that I did about we did an adhesion and strength uh, test video, and we've also talked about discoloration as they relate to pressed flowers and polymer clay, which you may remember when we did these tiles, and I'll link to that video, where we were trying to find things that wouldn't discolor your flowers so much. And then this final uh, conversation, before we get into the fun things, is water resistance and that I'm going to talk about what I've decided to use on the pressed flowers that I'm going to be using on clay because clay has been shown to be a little bit more finicky for discoloration and it will also apply to helping you make decisions for paper or wood or other things like that so uh, while I'm using clay for the substrate certainly um, apply a lot of this to to other things these clay tiles I have put flowers on I put the flowers on the raw clay and then I baked it and so far there is nothing on top to protect them and you can even see here on this buttercup see this this petal here these pet this these petals didn't adhere down into the clay so um, I'm going to do a technique video where I apply the the top coats that that are determined to be the best, and I'll show you what I do about that. So all of these need, need a surface applied, and uh, we're going to make some final decisions here today about what to use. Something else I want to talk about for a minute on things that I tested, but I did not put them in the prior video, um, was the liquid clays. I tested Kato. TLS, which is translucent liquid Sculpey, and FEMO. And so I'm just going to show you the results of that real quick and what my conclusion was. The, the Kato I did at 310 for about 25 minutes, and then when it came out of the oven, I've seen a lot of techniques where people blow um, their, their uh, heat guns or their dryers on to help further make it... Uh, transparent and that's what I did to we'll talk about Kato for a minute so this top row here is Kato and when this came out of the oven uh, it was pretty transparent but not as transparent it is now and I took a heat gun on it and the problem is it caused this part turned out okay but it caused this one which has more petal layers uh, to bubble and so I don't consider the liquid Kato or the liquid clay to be the best answer especially if you're going to take some sort of heat um, apparatus to the, the liquid clay after it comes out of the oven to further clarify it and I did the same thing here um, I baked the Kato and then I took the, the heat gun to it excuse me one of them fell off and it turned this buttercup more brown than I would care to have it. And then this just bubbled up somewhat bad. All of them did. The buttercup, the, the, um, the fern leaf bleeding heart, as well as the, well, the Queen Anne not so much. but And then even on the paper. Now it could just be me because I'm not very experienced with polymer clay. Um, but I also took the heat gun to this guy to make it more clear and it bubbled up a little bit too. These I I put a pretty thick layer though on this so that could be why maybe I was using it too thick. These two I actually put the Kato on a few days prior to putting baking these in the oven and what I learned about that is if you put it on too soon and then you leave it sit for a few days because you get busy, well this one isn't, but this one is, um, it, it soaked through to the paper. 
which if you want that, that's fine. And it also, because it soaked in so much when it was baked, it kind of gave the orange peel effect. Anyway, so that was Kato. This is TLS, Translucent Liquid Sculpey. And this one, when it came out of the oven, I put the heat gun to it and it bubbled too. And it's still a little bit milky because once I saw it starting to bubble, I just, I said, forget it. And I just, I just stopped because it started bubbling way before it ever became transparent. And so I did another test here with this one and I did not take any heat to it. So without heat, it, the translucent liquid Sculpey laid down a, a smooth surface. Um, but it's, it's not totally transparent. But if you want kind of this, uh, what would you call it, kind of a, you know, a, 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 I'm not finding the right word, but if you want that kind of look, which I like that kind of look if you want a more matted, subdued look, um, then just don't take the, the dryer, the heat gun or a dryer to it and just leave it the way it is. And I just played around with some paper tests just because. And I did take the heat gun to this, which made it a little bit uh, less translucent and a little more transparent. And I like the effects on paper. I just don't care um, unless I want this type of a look. Uh, I don't I don't care for it on the clay tile when you take the heat gun to it. And then the final one was the Fimo, which to me, um, now the TLS and the Fimo, uh, I baked at 265 for about 25 to 30 minutes. And I really liked the way the Fimo came out because it came out very uh, pretty clear and transparent. And I didn't have to take a heat gun to it. So this is all Fimo, and I and I really really like the way it it uh, performed. The problem is, and I don't know if you can see it. The problem is it pulled back. So this whole area here, right here, right here, um, is raw. Well, not raw clay, but it's baked clay. But there's nothing on it because I put Fimo down on the whole thing, and I did a fairly decent uh, layer. Uh, it wasn't overly thick, but it certainly wasn't thin. And in any event, it um, it pulled back. Now, I haven't tested it with putting another uh, layer on top to see if that'll solve the problem. But uh, the conclusion or the bottom line is that uh, it doesn't matter because I won't be using uh, translucent or transparent or liquid clay um, on press flower tiles or press flowers for that anything with press flowers because there are other mediums that that in my opinion for my tests work just as well or better and this just doesn't give a good result that I'm looking for so I did do the tests I wanted to show you the results of the tests just in case you were curious about it um, but I will not be using this for press flowers so we'll set that aside We'll set this aside because we'll come back to how to protect these flowers in a separate video. So what, what our main purpose here today is the water test. And also an honorable mention, or more than honorable mention, something the other day that I just casually passed upon was this perfect paper adhesive. I had done a test and I'll show you, uh, let me see, get the right tile here. Sorry about that. I was, I was, thought I was all, uh, okay. Well, now I can't find it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> here it is. It's on a different tile. No wonder I can't find it. Sorry about that. Okay. So I had done this with this perfect paper adhesive, and you can see it passed the discoloration test. And I didn't realize that I'd already done one when I had done another just before the video I did um, yesterday or the day before, whenever it was. Uh, and I really hadn't paid much attention to it outside of doing the test and giving it a casual mention. 
Well, after I did the water test, which we're going to do now, um, I was shocked because it uh, was pretty waterproof or water resistant. And I went, hmm, let me take a closer look at that perfect paper because it doesn't discolor the flowers on clay. And now that I know that it's water resistant, I'm going to bring that back to tile because we're working with water. Move these out of the way. Okay. Let's get on to the water. This is my preliminary test, and I did this yesterday with the same tiles we're going to use today. So unless I washed all of the the uh, medium off that was not water resistant, um, it should hold true today, hopefully. So we're going to kind of double check. And anything with a check mark are things that I, in my test, or at least in my humble opinion, um, are water resistant enough to use as a top coat on press flowers, and in this case, polymer clay, which was the main focus. Uh, but I would also use them on top of flowers and wood uh, if I wanted to do, do paper techniques or, you know, anything, metal, glass. I, I wouldn't hesitate if it would take a top coat application and these products were compatible with what I was putting it on. I wouldn't hesitate to use the things that have a check mark so long as they give the results that you're looking for. Um, the ones to focus on that, that did not work was the Matte Mod Podge, the Elmer's Glue, the Tacky Glue, and the Weld Bond. And I was actually somewhat disappointed because before I did the water test and after my video, uh, my prior video that I'll link to, I think I was saying that I was actually going to use Weld Bond and Tacky Glue because I was really happy with the performance on top of the, uh, the clay. Uh, in some of my tests. Uh, but now that I did the water resistance test, I'm going to have to rethink that plan. What I did do with a couple of items that I already used Tacky Glue and Weld Bond on is um, I'm going to top coat them with one of these items that uh, are shown to be water resistant to help then to, to solve the problem for the ones that I already did. Uh, so anyway, having said that, we'll get on to the test. And I'm going to get one more item. I'll be right back. Okay, I wanted to get one more item that I will show you in just a minute here. I'll show you how I did the tests. Very, very scientific here. <laughs> okay, so I took a bowl of water and I took, okay, this is uh, tacky glue. Matte. Mod Podge, Tacky Glue, Weld Bond, uh, Matte Mod Podge, Elmer's Glue. Okay, those are all the things that I determined that did not work at all. And so we will let them sit for a second. And Let's see. Worked pretty quickly yesterday. Yeah, you can already see. Let me get something to... You can already see how milky the Elmer's is getting. It's already turning milky. And that was just after, what, 30 seconds in the water. So we'll set that aside. So that reaffirms our um, that reaffirms that Elmer's is, is no good. And then same thing here. Which one what was this weld bond? See how weld bond's already turning milky. So again, that reaffirms that that that's a fail. Same thing. Tacky glue. It's already turning milky. See how it's, you can tell on the, you can see it on the leaves, how it's white. So that affirms that's no good. So this is also tacky glue. Oh, look at, see how bad that is? Yeah, so that's not water resistant at all. 
And what was this one? This is... Oh, this is dishwasher. No wonder it's... Okay, this, this is dishwasher. This is the dishwasher Mod Podge, which is, which is waterproof or water resistant. And so I put it in the wrong pile. So we, that's, that goes in the good pile. And this is Matte Mod Podge. And it's starting to, uh, it's starting to turn. So that reaffirms the, uh, the X's, the Matte Mod Podge, the Tacky Glue, and the Weld Bond, and the Elmer's. Okay, so there was no, no different result on the second time around. So now we're gonna put in the things that, that do work. And I didn't do a tile. This is um, dimensional magic. I didn't do a tile for it, but I wanted to test it. So let's put that in there. And we'll talk about these wood pieces in a minute. Okay, so. And while we're waiting for those to soak for a minute, the products that I consider uh, the winner, the overall winner that I will use on clay tiles and other projects um, for press flowers with wet mediums is, and this is in no particular order, it just depends on what you want to use for your projects, um, Perfect Paper and they also make a mat which I want to get, so I'll use the gloss and the mat. Dishwasher Mod Podge. It needs to be the dishwasher Mod Podge in order not to uh, uh, turn mushy like the uh, the tacky glue or the matte Mod Podge. Okay, let's see what our tests are doing, and we'll get back to the products that, that I consider that work fine. Okay, this is the Dimensional Magic. There's no change. So Dimensional Magic, um, if you're doing transfers and stuff, uh, you could start peeling the paper off right now. See, see how you can, and you could use it. You could use it as a top coat for image transfer. So I would use I would use that if I were gonna do something like that. So that would be a, on the list of things that would be a success. Um. This was uh, dishwasher, dishwasher Mod Podge. Same thing, it's holding up fine. This is, what was this? Future Top Coat. Okay, this, I use Matte Mod Podge, but it, when, I, when I found out that Matte Mod Podge did not work, because we know that it, it uh, it gets all mushy again. I put some future on top, and that seemed to, well, it worked, for, it, it, well, I guess it didn't work very well because this just came right off, so that was the matte Mod Podge with a layer of future on top, but the future didn't, one thin coat of future did not protect the flowers. Uh, this is Minwax Polyclear. That works. That didn't, didn't, uh, Fade. This is the uh, yeah. That's that's also um, dimensional magic, which works. This is future. That works. And diamond glaze. Diamond glaze works too, except for it gives a little bit more ghosting than the dimensional magic. But I would use diamond glaze um, on paper and other crafts. Diamond glaze works pretty good. Glossy accents works okay. Just I just it just doesn't work on the polymer clay. It just colors the flowers more than I care care for it too. Okay, so that's really about it. Um, I'm gonna do a video showing me using some of these techniques on those tiles that need uh, need a top coat. I was talking about, and these are the these are now. The products that I've decided to use as my wet mediums on my pressed flower items, uh, no matter what 
the substrate is, I will have these at the top of my list. And we already showed you the perfect paper and the Mod Podge. And so again, that was uh, Minimax Polyacrylic worked. And that Mod Podge and uh, Nail Polish, which these tiles, um, this is Liquitex Matte, Matte Mod Podge, and Nail Polish. And I already know um, from using Nail Polish for a long time that Nail Polish is uh, water resistant. And of course, my go-to now for many, many things, uh, especially polymer clay, is the, uh, used to be called or known as Future, it's the Pledge Floor Care Finish. And then when I want to cut down on the, the glare, say from a Dimensional Magic, which is very glossy, or if I want to top coat on something because, uh, because I love to use this stuff, if I want to spray, I'm using the Ultra, uh, the two times. I've got semi-gloss, clear, and uh, matte. So just depending upon what kind of sheen or gloss I want to the surface uh, dictates which, which one of these variants that I would use. This is, uh, I'm assuming this was probably the tacky glue because it looks like it's getting milky. That's the matte Mod Podge. Okay, so yeah, that gets milky. Uh, the matte Liquitex, which I will not use on flowers because um, of that, remember that test that we did where I w went on and on about how bad the matte Liquitex is and it's... Um, uh, discoloration on clay with the flowers. Uh, the water test, it works on the water test. It seems to be water resistant. So if you're not, if you have matte Liquitex around and you're not using it on clay, certainly, you know, give all these uh, things a try on other surfaces. Uh, and then this is nail polish. And like I say, I know, I know, I know nail polish works. So again, that's all right, so that's that test. And then I'm pretty much done with all the water stuff. I have one more thing I want to get on the record strictly for, uh, for my own interest, and then maybe someone else will be curious about it. I've got um, several different white papers, and I just wanted to uh, make notes about about what they are and how white they are, just like I said, for my own information. And I was actually kind of surprised because the white really casts a yellow shine on here. But hopefully it's it looks yellow in the monitor that I'm looking at. Uh, so I don't know if you're going to get a good... These are white, but I don't know if you're getting a yellowish rendition of white. Uh, but what surprised me, and I'll just describe it, is that going from lightest to thickest... Um, this is a 20 pound 92 bright 75G, and this is just copy paper from Office Depot. And it's the thinnest weight, but what surprises me is that this paper is actually brighter than this paper, which is a 24 pound 90G, 108 bright. And this is a bright white inkjet paper by Hewlett Packard. So, if I just, for whatever that's worth, I just found that kind of weird. Um, this is a 24 pound, 98 bright, 90G. Uh, this is premium laser paper by Xerox, and it's a lot whiter than this 108 bright. So you can't always judge a white paper's true whiteness by how it says it's, it, its bright number, which is what I found by this whole little uh, comparison. A 24 pound, 106 bright 90 GSM, and to me this is um, this has kind of got more of a, a bluish cast than this one does. Um, I mean it's it's bright, but it's got a little. So again, it just depends on what kind of cast you want. And then this one is uh, Nina Exact Index. It's more of a it's a cardstock, and it is 110. And it's 199G, and it's 94 bright, and probably because of the thickness, but of all of them, this is 
certainly shows up as being the whitest of all of them, but I'm sure it's because of the thickness. So I just thought that that was kind of interesting. And the reason why I did that is I was looking for, I was doing a project and I wanted a really bright white, um, I didn't want cardstock, but I wanted a bright white paper that wasn't just um, copier quality. Uh, I wanted something a little bit more thicker and robust. And so if you, like this is the thinnest, and then this is the next thinnest, and it's it's 24 pound as opposed to 20, but I don't know, it doesn't feel a whole lot different. This one is very um, satiny finish. I really like the feel of this one. It, it's This one's got more of a resistance, you know, texture. This is very smooth and satiny. This one, this one is smoother than this one, in my opinion. And again, this is all just in my opinion. Um, but they're both smoother than, than these guys. And this is, you know, just smooth card stock. There's nothing really, it's, this, this just feels like an index card. So if you know, any, most of us know what that feels like. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's it. That's the end of my video right now. So thanks for tuning in and, uh, now we have the winners of all of our tests, at least in my opinion, and as always, do your own test to see what works for you, or if you have products that I haven't tried out and, and they work, uh, certainly share with, uh, with me so that uh, I know what else is out there, and other people will too. So thanks for tuning in, and you have a wonderful day.